I'd like to go over some of the things we missed in all the previous videos, some things I may have forgotten to show. So we'll rush through a few of these things, but also there's also something new that was added since I started the videos. And that is in scheduler we added to the intros and outros and combos we added another selector. I'll show you what that is. The Radiologic Scheduler Help. Bring that up. And in the voiceovers, we now have six different selectors. So artist-title we knew about, uh, artist, search, album, but we've added in brackets genre and in brackets year as search. So if I were to go into the Radiologic folder, I'm going to look in my DJ voices. I have some in here already. Uh, my DJ voice J. In the intros, I decided to make some year examples and some genre examples. So these are you could have rock in here, whatever, but they need to be in brackets. I you can use whatever folders you want to keep yourself organized in here. Um, they, you know, you don't have to have a years. You don't have to have a a genre folder. It's going to match in these subfolders of your intros no matter what. But for me, I like to organize them so I know what my collection is. Okay, so that's one thing. Um, the other is um, something I didn't mention before, which is doing DJ voices. We showed how you could do it for the whole program, but did you know that you can actually individually set them let me put one up here. We'll pick a uh, a combo. This would work for an intro or an outro or a combo. You can actually choose your voice per script line. So let's take this time and make that into a combo. And we could change that to be Gen. So you can actually do it intra program. Uh, change your DJ voices intra program. So thought that might be interesting. And let's see, let's take a time announcement. And so you can make your time announcements from one and your intros and outros from another, that sort of thing. All right, another thing I don't think I showed is um, sometimes you'll see uh, art displayed in here when uh, my track doesn't happen to have art. Um, I'm going to put this one to the top for now. And you can see that we do have art here. You, know, you can actually make it so your default published art, which is used for tracks that either don't have art or uh, web publishing when you are just publishing the default. It can be any art that you've created that you can specify. And that's just a pretty simple thing. You make uh, a default art.jpg inside your Radiologic folder. I think mine's pretty big here, and it'll get resized <clears throat> according to what's published. It will get resized, obviously, here in the uh, players. In the preferences on the advanced, you can actually specify your output size for web art, um, album art that gets published, and you can specify what uh, level of JPEG quality as well right here. Okay, another thing is you can change the publishing. You can actually override the publishing that's going out at any moment just by clicking in the publishing area here, and you can specify you, what you want and, uh, and set that. So um, if you hit the default, it will return, but I can just put in uh, something else for right now. Uh, we'll put in... And I'll take that out and I'll publish that. And we'll see the publishing now changes to what I specified. If I click it again, I can hit the default. It will actually grab back what's actually playing. We can also program tracks right from the play history. So we have a bunch of tracks here. I'm just going to memorize. We're up to 1056. Um, I've been doing all kinds of wacky stuff here. So I have a some strange lists, but you can take any number of tracks here. I just held shift to select that. I can program these to the bottom and I can just add to my program that way. So one other thing uh, that you can do 
is you can actually save programs. Uh, you could save this entire queue as a program, and then you could re reload it later. And you can save a selection of a program. So you could actually program a whole different program in here, uh, let's say from a given point. And you can just save the selection, the program selection, what we see here. Now, when you save this, if you want to be able to access it from, say, the load command and scheduler, you will want to save it in the programs folder in your radiologic folder. And you can save this as a normal program file, which is really just a playlist of files that, from the program queue that go back to the program queue. Or you can save it as a portable program bundle. When you save it as a, a portable program bundle, all of the audio files are actually put into the file. And that makes it so it's more portable, so you can actually u move the whole program from one Mac to another, and then load that. Either load it uh, with another copy of Radiologic DJ, or load it with a load command uh, on a scheduler on another Mac, and those files will be uh, taken along for the ride. And last thing is uh, refreshing menus. Uh, mostly, refreshing menus do refresh on their own, and the menus I'm talking about are the playlist menus and the script menus primarily. Auto-refresh menus will generally take care of that. Uh, if you happen to have this off or you find um, it's not refreshing uh, a new playlist that you've created in iTunes, they're not showing up here right away, uh, you can manually refresh the menus here, and uh, scheduler uh, actually has the same thing. If you add a new playlist, generally it should show up. Um, and in fact, these pro these uh, DJ voices are also menus as well, so these these get refreshed as well. These playlists get refreshed. The Apple Script menu gets refreshed uh, just by doing um, refresh. And I can't find it now, but refresh uh, refresh menus right there. We'll do it. Okay, that's about it.